Welcome to Academic Game Tutorials. In today's class we are going to learn in details about the recent developments in manufacturing. We are studying introduction and overview of manufacturing. We will cover all related topics one by one. Before starting, if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, just click on subscribe and press the bell icon. Here, we come up with new videos on different subjects to make the academic studies easier for you. So, into the topic. Manufacturing materials, processes, and systems have been the object of development for thousands of years. In this section, we want to focus on developments that are of more recent vintage, say within the last 25 to 50 years. The discussion is organized around the topic areas like microelectronics, computerization of manufacturing, flexible manufacturing, microfabrication and nanotechnology, lean production and Six Sigma, globalization, and environmentally conscious manufacturing. Microelectronics Microelectronics involves electronic devices that are fabricated on a microscopic scale. Examples include integrated circuits, which consist of components such as transistors, diodes, and resistors that have been fabricated and electrically connected on a small FLA chip, usually made of silicon. The remarkable feature about today's microelectronics devices is the huge number of components that can be contained onto the chip. The capability to fabricate integrated circuit states from the early 1960s and has advanced to the point where the current technology is called gigascale integration, meaning that chips are being produced consisting of billions of components. Microelectronics has become so pervasive that a large proportion of the common items used today are based on this technology. Two-thirds of the products in our knowledge are either called electronics products or their function and operation depend on electronics. Computerization of manufacturing The first digital computers date from the mid-1940s, but their applications in manufacturing came quite a few years later. In the mid-1960s direct numerical control was developed, in which mainframe computers were employed to remotely control machine tools in factories. As computer technology developed, enabled by advances in microelectronics, the cost of computers and data processing was reduced, leading to the widespread use of personal computers, not only in the office but also in the factory for tasks ranging from control of individual equipment on the shop floor to control of the information required to manage the entire enterprise. The Internet has allowed manufacturing companies to communicate among their own geographically distributed plants and offices, and it has also provided access to customers and suppliers around the world. Flexible Manufacturing During most of the 20th century, the emphasis in the manufacturing industries in the United States was on mass production to satisfy the consumer demands of a rapidly growing population. Mass production is still widely used in the United States and throughout the world but computerization has enabled manufacturing companies to develop systems that are able to cope with product variations. Cellular manufacturing and mixed model assembly lines are two examples of manually operated manufacturing systems that are capable of producing a variety of parts or products without the time-consuming downtime for changeover. The automobile industry, in particular, is designing its final assembly lines so that ever greater model variations can be accommodated on a single line to meet changing and unpredictable demand patterns. Computerization has also allowed flexibility to be designed into automated systems. Closely related to flexible manufacturing is mass customization, which involves a production system that is capable of producing individualized products for each customer. The customer specifies the model and options, and the product is made to those specifications. Microfabrication and Nanotechnology Another recent development in manufacturing, closely related to microelectronics, is the introduction of materials and products whose dimensions are sometimes so small that they cannot be seen by the naked eye. In extreme cases, the items cannot even be seen under an optical microscope. Products that are so miniaturized require special fabrication technologies. Microfabrication refers to the processes needed to make parts and products whose feature sizes are in the micrometer range, of 1 micrometers or 10 inverse 3 millimeters or 10 inverse 6 meters. Examples including jet printing heads, compact discs, 
CDs and DVDs, and microsensors used in automotive applications, for example, airbag deployment sensors. Nanotechnology refers to materials and products whose feature sizes are in the nanometer scale, where 1 nanometer, equal to 10 inverse 3 micrometers equals to 10 inverse 6 millimeters equals to 10 inverse 9 meters, a scale that approaches the size of atoms and molecules. Ultra-thin coatings for catalytic converters, flat-screen TV monitors, and cancer drugs are examples of products based on nanotechnology. Lean Production and Six Sigma these are two programs aimed at improving efficiency and quality in manufacturing. They address demands by customers for products they buy to be both low in cost and high in quality. Lean Production and Six Sigma are being widely adopted by companies, especially in the United States. Lean Production is based on the Toyota production system developed by Toyota Motors in Japan. Its origins date from the 1950s and 1960s when Toyota began using unconventional approaches to improve quality, reduce inventories, and increase flexibility in its operations. Lean production can be defined simply as doing more work with fewer resources. It means that fewer workers and less equipment are used to accomplish more production in less time, and yet achieve higher quality in the final product. The underlying objective of lean production is the elimination of various forms of waste, such as producing defective parts, excessive inventories, and workers waiting. Six Sigma was started in the 1980s at Motorola Corporation in the United States. The objective was to reduce variability in the company's processes and products to increase customer satisfaction. Today, Six Sigma can be defined as a quality-focused program that utilizes worker teams to accomplish projects aimed at improving an organization's operational performance. Globalization and Outsourcing The world is becoming more and more integrated, creating an international economy in which barriers once established by national boundaries have been reduced or eliminated. This has enabled a freer flow of goods and services, capital, technology, and people among regions and countries. Globalization is the term that describes this trend, which was recognized in the late 1980s and is now a dominant economic reality. Of interest here is that once underdeveloped nations such as China, India, and Mexico have developed their manufacturing infrastructures and technologies to a level such that they are now important producers in the global economy. These countries have large populations, and therefore large workforces, and low labor costs. Hourly wages are significantly higher in the United States than in these countries, making it difficult for domestic U.S. companies to compete in many products that require high labor content. Examples include garments, furniture, toys, and electronic consumer products. The result has been a loss of manufacturing jobs in the United States and a gain of related work to these countries. Outsourcing is closely related to globalization. In manufacturing, outsourcing refers to the use of outside contractors to perform work that was traditionally accomplished in-house. Outsourcing can be done in several ways, including the use of local suppliers. In this case the jobs remain in the United States. Alternatively, U.S. companies can outsource to foreign countries, so that parts and products once made in the United States are now made outside the country. In this case U.S. jobs are displaced. Two possibilities can be distinguished. Offshore outsourcing, which refers to production in China or other overseas locations and transporting the items by cargo ship to the United States, and nearshore outsourcing, which means the items are made in Canada, Mexico, or Central America and shipped by rail or truck into the United States. A supplier is usually thought of as a company that provides materials and components for a customer who is engaged in production of a product, whereas a contract manufacturer accomplishes the whole production of the product. It may use suppliers itself. Environmentally Conscious Manufacturing An inherent feature of virtually all manufacturing processes is waste. The most obvious examples are material removal processes in which chips are removed from a starting workpiece to create the desired part geometry. Waste in one form or another is a byproduct of nearly all production operations. Another unavoidable aspect of manufacturing is that power is required to accomplish any given process. Generating that power requires fossil fuels, 
at least in the United States and China, the burning of which results in pollution of the environment. At the end of the manufacturing sequence, a product is created that is sold to a customer. Ultimately, the product wears out and is disposed of, perhaps in some landfill, with the associated environmental degradation. More and more attention is being paid by society to the environmental impact of human activities throughout the world and how modern civilization is using our natural resources at an unsustainable rate. Global warming is presently a major concern. The manufacturing industries contribute to these problems. Environmentally conscious manufacturing refers to programs that seek to determine the most efficient use of materials and natural resources in production and minimize the negative consequences on the environment. Other terms for these programs include green manufacturing and sustainable manufacturing. They all boil down to two basic approaches, design products that minimize their environmental impact and design processes that are environmentally friendly product design is the logical starting point in environmentally conscious manufacturing. The term design for environment, DFE, is used for the techniques that attempt to consider environmental impact during product design prior to production. Considerations in DFE include selecting materials that require minimum energy to produce, selecting processes that minimize waste of materials and energy, designing parts that can be recycled or reused, designing products that can be readily disassembled to recover the parts, designing products that minimize the use of hazardous and toxic materials, and giving attention to how the product will be disposed of at the end of its useful life. To a great degree, decisions made during design dictate the materials and processes that are used to make the product. These decisions limit the options available to the manufacturing departments to achieve sustainability. However, Various approaches can be applied to make plant operations more environmentally friendly. They include adopting good housekeeping practices by keeping the factory clean, preventing pollutants from escaping into the environment, rivers and atmosphere, minimizing waste of materials in unit operations, recycling rather than discarding waste materials, using net shape processes, using renewable energy sources when feasible, maintaining production equipment so that it operates at maximum efficiency, and, 8, investing in equipment that minimizes power requirements. So, we have studied in details about the recent developments in manufacturing. Hope this will be helpful. Thank you.